Number 41. Determine the bond order of each member of the following groups and determine which member of each group is predicted by the molecular orbital model to have the strongest bond. Okay, and then we have the three molecules here. So we have Li2, Be2+, and Be2. Okay, so before we get into the mess down here, which is the molecular orbital configurations, um, we basically have to find out the number of valence electrons. Now, you might be saying, whoa, 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 Christina, what, what do we have to do that? They wanted bond order. Just know that bond order, the easiest way to find a bond order is to know how many bonding and antibonding electrons there are. And that comes from these configurations. And those configurations are based off of valence electrons. Now, there's two elements here, or two different elements here. We have lithium and beryllium. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just find the uh, valence electrons for both right now. So we have Li2, right? And if we look on the periodic table for where lithium is, right? Lithium is in group one. So it's a group one atom. So group one means that you have one valence electron. And since you have double the lithiums, right? You, get, you got two lithiums here. I'm going to say, okay, I have two lithiums and I'm going to multiply by one valence electron. I'll just say val electron. And in this case, for the Li2, we're dealing with two total valence electrons. Now let's just do the... Um, Be on the other side, I guess. So we have Be. I'm not going to do the two, the plus one yet because it's always good to do the neutral one first and then adjust. So if we look and say, okay, well, where is beryllium on the periodic table? That's Be. You will notice that Be is in group two. So it's the one right next door to lithium. So group two means two valence electrons, but you got two beryllium's. So double the fun. Two times two valence electrons will get us at a total of four valence electrons. All right. So now that's good enough start for now. We will figure out the Be2 plus um, one when we do the Be2 for the orbital configuration. So let's start with lithium. So maybe I'll put Li, maybe I'll put Li, yeah, I guess I'll put it over here, Li2. Now we're going to be using one of these templates and these templates differ because of where these elements are located in the periodic table. Now for both beryllium and lithium, we're looking at groups one and two both group one and two follow the same molecular orbital configuration. So I'm just going to use this and I can manipulate this one when I'm working with the beryllium one. So as far as this question goes, we can get rid of the bottom one, but I just wanted to show you that there are two types. So if you want to pause the video um, to write out the other one, that's fine with me, but I need more space. So we'll pull that up now. The next thing we have to figure out is what S's and what P's are we working with? Are we working in 1S or 2P, 2S, 3S, 3P? Well, this comes from the periods. Lithium and beryllium, they're both in period two. So that is going to be your S's and P's. So 2S and 2P's all around. So the number two is going to be used for the whole thing. And just know that these are your molecular orbitals, right? This is a sigma bond and these are pi's. And for every bonding molecular orbital, aka one that you don't see a star, there's an antibonding equivalent. But the, the, uh, the goal here is that we're going to try to put the total number of valence electrons in um, a molecular orbital configuration. And the way that I wrote this is that the most left is the lowest energy. And as you go from left to right, you increase in energy. So you have to drop your um, electrons in from left to right. And for 
each molecular orbital, you're only allowed to have a max of two. So for lithium, you only got two. So the first um, electron uh, molecular orbital is going to be used up. Though all those electrons are going to go into this molecular orbital, and maybe we'll extend it out to this one. This one will have zero. But all of the p orbitals, we don't even have to worry about that. So we're going bye-bye. So how fun is that? Now, let's see, I actually can use this over here. Because now, let's find the bond order. Now the bond order formula is pretty simple. It's this right here. Bond order just equals the number of bonding electrons minus the number of antibonding. And the antibonding are easy because we are going to find those by looking at the stars. The bonding ones don't have any stars. So you see here, here's a star. This orbital is an antibonding orbital, but you got zero electrons in here. This one, since there's no um, there's no star, that's a bonding one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say bond order equals something minus something divided by two. And maybe I, there we go, we should start there. So antibonding, no electrons in the star, so that's zero. And the bonding is the other one, so that's two. So now we can just figure it out, right? Two minus zero is two. Two divided by two is a one. So I have a bond order of one for the Li2. Now let's skip over this plus one. Let's just do the Be2 the Be two because we know that we have four valence electrons. So what I'm going to do is, since they're in the same period, I can take this configuration because the twos and just plug in more uh, electrons. Remember, Be2, I need a total of four valence electrons. So here's two. I need two more. So that's going over here. And two plus two is four. That's the four valence electrons. Now I just have to do the bond order. Bond order equals something minus something divided by two. Antibonding, look for those stars. You got two antibonding now. And the bonding remain exactly the same, two. So let's just do the math. Two minus two is zero. Zero divided by two is zero. So that's the bond order for BE2. And the last one we have to find out is BE2 with the plus charge. Now remember, a plus charge means a plus one. And what that plus one means is that we lost one electron. And we lost one electron from the Be2. So that's why I like to do the, the uh, neutral ones first, because then I can just manipulate that one to get what I want. So if I'm going to lose one electron, you always lose it from the highest energy going down to the lowest. So I'm going to cut off over here. So I'm not going to have two here. I'm going to have one. So maybe I'll just put that and we'll put one and beautiful. Bond order equals something minus something divided by two. <laughs> now I have one antibonding and bonding still stays the same, two. So let's do the math. Two minus one is one. One divided by two is, maybe I could just pull this up here. Boop. One divided by two is 0 0.5. So there are all of your bond orders for Li2, which is a bond order of one, Be2, which is zero, and Be2 plus is a plus, is a, is a 0 0.5. But now just know that they wanted to also know the strongest bond. The strongest bond always has the highest bond order. So now you just have to rank the bond order. Out of these three bond orders, one is the highest number. So Li2 would be the strongest bond. And that's it.
Okay. Let's just color this in. And then we are done with this problem. What'd you think? Oh, yeah. All right. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That just helps us out here. And it just gets the word out there in the YouTube universe that this channel has, actually exists. I think it's a pretty cool channel. What do you think? Let me know uh, if you have any questions in the comments. Look forward to talking to you guys. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.